YouTube! What's up? It's your boy Koozie. Welcome to my first ever Escape from Tarkov video. Today's video is going to be kicking off a brand new series called EFT for Noobs. Now, what I want the series to be about is it's going to be a professional playthrough as well as a guide offering tips and tricks. This series is going to be geared towards new players, but maybe you're like me. This is my first like legitimate wipe that I started at from the beginning. Uh, and maybe you just want to know more about the game. So even though I'm not a professional, uh, I have played this game a lot. Um, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos on it. I've studied the wiki like the back of my hand. Hey, that's new. And I, I like to consider my, my knowledge of the game a, a little bit above average. So um, hopefully some of the things that I have in this series will, will benefit you. But uh, before I get into the actual action for today's video, I'm going to be on my main account. Uh, what I want to do is I want to go through uh, kind of a surface level view explaining what Tarkov is, uh, the traders, uh, even the best settings. Uh, as well as a couple other things along the way and uh yeah so one thing i will say is that the videos will be a little bit more lengthy because tarkov is for lack of a better word a behemoth of a game there is a lot to learn about it there's a lot of information to take from it so i'm going to try to keep it as concise as possible but you know we're there there's a lot okay uh so uh do me a favor if uh you want to come back for this series make sure to hit that subscribe button with notifications on drop a like so that other people can know about this uh drop a comment uh maybe even tag your friends in it or or share this to your social media to let your friends know that you know hey there's this weird dude on the internet that uh plays this game that i've been getting into check it out so anyways enough pitter patter chitter chatter let's get into the video all right, so what is Escape from Tarkov? Well, I guess to put it simply, Escape from Tarkov is an FPS survival MMORPG military simulator. <laughs> and uh, what it is, is you go into these missions called raids, and while you're in there, uh, you are there to get as much loot as possible. Uh, however, the caveat is whatever you go into the raid with, if you die, you end up losing completely. Uh, there's a couple of things to that, which I'll explain later on down the road. Uh, while you're in these raids, there are scavs, which are AI controlled militia that are there to kind of just be around the map um, and shoot at you pretty much. Uh, also, there are some scab bosses on other maps uh, and the scab bosses are essentially like god scabs pretty much. They're, their aim is a hell of a lot better. They're a lot more like aggressive. Um, and a step below them are raiders and they're like a step above the just regular scavs and they do not miss. Um, the other wrench that's thrown into the mix is while you're in these raids, there are other players, um, AKA PMCs that are trying to do the exact same thing that you're doing. Um, now in this game, you level up your character through various skills that you've got to upgrade throughout your time playing. There's also different tasks that you have to do. So these other players are in there trying to do the same thing that you're doing. They're there to complete tasks, kill scabs, get as much loot as possible, um, and even kill other PMCs. So it's uh, it's crazy, man. And uh, one thing I will say is that do not be overwhelmed. There's a lot to this game. You'll get there, okay? It, it takes a while, but um, Tarkov is, is, is a fun game once you get over the, the overwhelming aspect of, oh my God, there's so much to learn about this game. So with your PMC, when you start out the game, which you'll see in next week's video, uh, you get to choose between two factions. You've got Bear and you've got Yusek. Bear is Russian speaking characters uh, with more Russian oriented weapons that you start out with. Yusek is more American style weapons with uh, English voice lines and all that stuff. That's pretty much it. Whenever we get into next week's video, I will be doing a brand new account that I'll be starting on. That's kind of the overview of, of Tarkov, what it is. There's a lot more in-depth to it, which we'll, we'll touch on as we go through the series. And what I want to do is I want to focus on the key as or one key aspect of the game each episode. So today's video is just going to be giving you the, the basic overview of Tarkov. Um, I, I guess as far as key aspect goes, what I, what I want to touch on today is uh, the, the traders and uh, also give you a little bit of tips and tricks on the settings. All right, so traders. You uh, have eight traders available to you, um, seven at the start of uh, your account creation. Um, you'll see that next week. But each of these eight traders uh, buy and sell different things. One quick thing I forgot to mention is the currency in this game is threefold. Uh, you've got rubles, which is your main currency, euros, and US dollars. 
Now, US dollars, uh, the only trader that buys and sells via US dollars is Peacekeeper, and he is your attachments guy. He's got some of the best attachments in the game. Uh, the other traders do sell uh, attachments, but he's, he's got some of the best. Um, Prapper is kind of your best friend the first few levels that you go through it's got a lot of good like starting gear same with skier and mechanic those these four are like your arms dealers um whereas therapist she sells all of your heels some food uh and later on some containers ragman uh gives you your gear in the sense of like uh your wearable stuff and then fence is just kind of like the, the trash can he he rips you off he he undersells and uh, prize gouges. He doesn't give you as, as much money for stuff as another trader would, and the stuff that he sells, uh, he sells for a really jacked up price. Finch used to be irrelevant, um, but now thanks to the Scav Karma thing, there is some relevancy to him once you hit level six in reputation, which I'll explain here in a second. You're able to buy uninsured items that were left in raid by PMCs. Now, whenever it comes to rep, this is one of the ways that you level up your trader. In order to level them up, you have to be a specific level uh, for your PMC. Uh, you have to have a specific amount of money spent and uh, you have to get the reputation up to a specific level. Now, to get them leveled up, you have to do tasks for them. So for instance, this punish for part three, upon completion, I do get point zero four uh prepper rep uh which will then bring this 0.6 up to a 0.64 and as you can see if you don't have the the requirements met it'll be red and if you do it'll be blue so that's traders so now what i want to touch on is i want to go through these settings real quick settings are personal preference uh whenever it comes to like sensitivity and keybinds and stuff but uh whenever it comes to like graphics and post effects and all that stuff i think that you can't enjoy a game to the fullest without it being set up properly now a lot of this will depend on your hardware but before i get into the to the visual aspect of things i want to talk about keybinds now Tarkov as I said in the beginning it's a very realistic military simulator thing so there's a lot of keybinds here that have a lot of different functions uh, you can lean left and right you can sidestep all that stuff um, and pretty much everything is, is the same here the only things that I've changed are uh, switch between sites which means like if you have a scope and then you've got like a, a red dot on top of that or like on the side of your gun this bind just basically moves it so we've got double click for our mouse three button here uh which is the the back one there chain scope magnification is self-explanatory i have double click mouse four which is the forward thumb mouse button for me uh and as far as what i have here i've got a corsair k65 uh tkl keyboard and a corsair glaive pro mouse the other thing that has changed here is your tech time and exits by default this is uh press o twice the letter o uh and this is actually pretty frequently used frequently used for me and uh this basically just shows you how much time you have left in the raid as well as it shows you all the available extracts um emergency weapon reload i have like almost unbound i rebound it to the uh dash button it's almost not needed because not only is it not as fast but you also drop your mag and i don't know about you but i'm i'm forgetful a lot so i just right out the gate i was like well you know this probably isn't going to be good for me so i just uh, unbound it and moved it to a key that is pretty much out of my reach the only other important one that i will say is the discard keybind what this is is this allows you to quickly drop things in your inventory and when you're in a raid you want to have that at your at your fingertips no pun intended basically what this does this is set to the delete key by default not the not the backspace key but the actual delete key what i've done is i've, I've changed it from that to the uh, tilde button which is uh right next to the uh number one key at the top of your keyboard so uh whatever whatever is comfortable for you um and as far as sensitivity goes i have a 0.24 uh, mouse sensitivity my mouse dpi is set to 800 and my aiming sensitivity is at 0.21 now again this is uh personal preference um sensitivity is more of a uh subjective thing uh you can use what i have as kind of a baseline and then just you know go into an offline raid get your 
um, settings dialed in and stuff like that. Same same with the keybinds too, man. Uh, and then what my camera is blocking here is this this, this is the double click timeout, and I think it's 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 set to point. Uh, three right now and I think that's what it's defaulted to so let's go to the game tab here your game tab is where you can change your name uh, choose your interface language main menu background is simply just the visual aspect back here uh, I have it set to random um, your quick slots is uh, for when you're in a raid there's a giant bar that comes across the screen and that shows you all of your your quick bound slots and uh, if you have it set to auto hide <clears throat> plot twist it'll hide them after a specific amount of time. Stamina and stance is in your bottom left corner here. Uh, it shows your player's stance and uh, how much stamina that they have. And your health condition shows up uh, over here on the left hand side, it's an outline of your player. And um, it shows what areas of your body are at what health, if that makes sense. Uh, I did have this on polychrome or monochrome uh, where it was just gonna be a, a gray and red outline. But uh, I did notice that like, for instance, if my arm was like two HP off from being full, full health, uh, it was like, it was still showing red. Like it was being all dramatic, like, oh, like, oh, like, oh. And uh, so I was like, okay, that's a bit dramatic. So I switched to, to polychrome, which just means your, your outline is gonna be green and then go green, yellow, orange, and red. And then black, meaning your, your arm is pretty much just non-existent. Highlight available operations. What this does is if I were to take this, you see how whenever I grabbed it, my uh, beta two and my black rock uh, highlighted themselves. That tells me that there's space in this for that item. So if I were to take it and drag it over here, it would go into my backpack. Uh, you can also just drag and drop in the actual backpack or this also applies to weapons too. You know, if you have an attachment, you can take it and go on the suppressor and because there's nothing that has room, uh, I can't put it anywhere. Uh, notification channel type, I just have that set the default. I don't really know. I don't know what WebSocket is, so yeah. Okay, now, as far as automatic RAM cleaner goes, I have 16 gigs of RAM on my gaming PC. Um, Tarkov is, is a pretty demanding game, but you don't have to have the International Space Station as your computer. Um, but I would recommend if you have anything less than 16 gigs, go ahead and uh, have this on. As far as only use physical cores, I think the rule of thumb is, is if you have an Intel processor, you wanna have this on. And if you have an AMD, which is what I have, I have a Ryzen 7, uh, you wanna have this off. FOB is your field of view. And basically what it is, is how high this, this is indicates how far quote unquote zoomed out your your view is going to be uh, i have mine set to, to 75 because i want to see the maximum amount of peripheral um however the downside about having this maxed out is a lot of times it makes it really hard to see uh players or scavs at far distances so a lot of times i'll be looking at dots rather than like you know little heads or whatever so if that's not really your your thing I would recommend dropping this down to no less than like 62 or 60. 60 is pushing it, okay? Now, as far as head bobbing goes, as I mentioned before, this is a realistic military simulator shooter kind of thing. Uh, so BSG, the developers, Battlestate Games, they have implemented a, a head bobbing mechanic where as you're running, if you have this up, your character's head is literally going to be like just like that. So uh, if you don't want to be nauseous the entire time while you're trying to enjoy Tarkov, uh, I would have this set to point two. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go to graphics here. All right. Uh, now, as far as what I have, I have a NVIDIA 2080 Super uh, graphics card and I want to try to get as most FPS as possible. So uh, overall graphics quality is, is set to high, but as you adjust things, it becomes custom. Texture quality, I have set to high. Shadows quality is basically uh, how thick the shadows are essentially. So the lower the quality, the further in shadows you're gonna be able to see. Uh, that also applies for shadow visibility. Object LOD quality, I have no idea what that is. So I have set that to two. Overall visibility, uh, 1000 is, is perfect. Uh, I used to think that cranking this up to like 2500 or even 3000 is, is beneficial. But what this is, is this just is your rendering distance in the sense of like, 
background objects. So it, it has nothing to do with players. It has nothing to do with competitive edge. If anything, the higher you crank this up, uh, the the less of a competitive competitive edge you're gonna have because your GPU and your CPU are having to render in more things, okay? Shadow visibility, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the higher up this is, the further into shadows you're gonna see. Uh, this can hit your frames a little bit, but honestly, the ability to see is much more important than one to two FPS more. Anti-aliasing, I have set to FXAA. Resampling, uh, you wanna have this set to one times. Don't downsample or super sample because that's gonna kill your graphics uh hbao off ssr off anisotropic filtering off nvidia Re reflex low latency this isn't even supposed to give you more frames what it does is it does lower your system latency sharpness uh, i have set the 0.5 um i used to have this up but i've dropped it down for a little bit more visual pleasure uh lobby fps limit i have set, set the 60 game fps limit is uh 144 and i forgot to mention that your screen resolution needs to be your monitor's native resolution i have a 1920 by 1080 monitor screen mode you want to have have set to full screen if at all possible i run dual pc and so i don't have to alt tab a lot um so full screen gives you the most immersive experience in the sense of like getting uh the most frames Whereas if you have to alt tab, I would go borderless or windowed. I think borderless is, is better than windowed, but don't quote me on that. Aspect ratio is just gonna be uh, your monitor's native aspect ratio, which I believe is, is gonna be 16.9 by across the board. High quality color and all this check mark stuff, you want to just keep off. I mean, this does enhance things a little bit as far as like visually. If you want more FPS and better performance, I would recommend keeping these things off. Now, now, post effects a lot of people have mixed views on post effects um but in my opinion i love them because tarkov is a very visually bland game and it helps me see a lot better uh what i would recommend is just like the sensitivity and all that stuff use this as a background and you can actually spawn into an offline raid and pull this up in raid and click visualize and it'll show the actual like raid and you can adjust this and it'll show you what it looks like in game uh, so you're not having to just kind of blindly adjust it but these are what i have for mine these these help tremendously now uh lastly let's touch on sound here sound in this game dude is not balanced okay it'll be really quiet one second and then the second a gunshot goes off you're getting tinnitus essentially so i'm gonna go through this and then i'm gonna show you guys uh something real quick in a, in a quick little excerpt video something that i use that has helped me tremendously so basically overall volume is set to 100 interface volume is your basically just it's that um it's just the the volume of you interacting with uh your menu also it's the volume of your interface whenever you're in a raid so i would highly recommend having this not too high because you want to have this uh loud enough to where you can kind of hear things but also quiet enough to where you can hear like outside stuff as well so like if you're looting a scab or a body uh, you can hear if somebody's walking up on you. Uh, chat volume, not relevant. Music volume, uh, the music is pretty good in this game, but I do have, uh, I've got my own personal music that I like to use while I am playing. Um, so I have set, I have that set to zero. Hideout volume is obviously the volume of uh, the hideout. Let's see, music on Radian is personal preference. Binaural audio is uh, AKA Steam audio. I would just have this on. BSG implemented it to try and enhance the audio of the game. There's still bugs in the game as far as audio goes. This has helped tremendously. So with that out of the way, uh, I wanna just uh, show you guys this quick little blip on SoundLock. This is a program that I use. Okay, so SoundLock is a program that you can use. I've included it in uh, the description below, a link to it, uh, is a program that you can use that is basically just a limiter on your PC's volume. Uh, and what this does is this allows me to still hear all of the quiet things at a proper volume. Uh, but whenever it comes to loud noises, for me, I'm really jumpy, I have anxiety. So uh, even a scav calming just out of nowhere makes me physically jump out of my chair. Um, and so to kind of help alleviate that, what I have downloaded here is SoundLock um, and it, you can limit your volume as much as possible um this is great i would highly recommend downloading this if you want to protect your hearing if you want to uh maybe just have a little bit more control over the audio um and again 
uh, this is super beneficial for me um, and I think it would be beneficial for you if you're like me and you're super jumpy and all that stuff so yeah let's get back into the video here okay so the maps all right there's uh, a multitude of, of maps here there's still some that will be coming down the line uh, but this game has been in beta for a couple years but uh, you've got the lab which uh, for me I'm not a labs content creator so uh, I probably won't be going there I might but we'll see uh, you've got interchange which is kind of like a big old mall uh, there's a lot of loot there it's great we're gonna be going there a lot uh, to make money and stuff for uh, this series customs is pretty much one of the maps that you're gonna be going to a lot for a lot of your tasks especially in the beginning woods is self-explanatory it's a giant forest factory is a smaller uh pvp kind of close combat map that's what it's really good for uh there's a couple tasks that you got to do so we'll be going there reserve is a pretty big map but again just like interchange there's a lot of loot there uh shoreline is uh, a large map it is a very very large map uh, but we we will be going there for the uh this series because there are some tasks that we got to do so uh what i would recommend is with tarkov it's not a beginner friendly game as i mentioned earlier there's no you don't go into a, to a raid and have a mini map in the top left corner uh there's no macro map that you can just pull up um there's there's maps that you can buy in the game but they're not helpful at all so i would just save your rubles uh, so what you can do to help learn the maps is you can go into what's called an offline raid. Now, whenever you go into a raid in general, you have two different time phases here uh, and they're in 24 hour time. There's a sunrise and a sunset. I don't know exactly when that is. I know that, for instance, if we were to go in at 2100 hours, which is nine o'clock at night, it would be kind of dusk and i think it starts to become like completely pitch black at 2200 hours so if you're if you're trying to task and all that stuff i would recommend going in on a uh night raid okay if you want to learn the map you can go into what's called an offline raid and what i would recommend is say i want to go woods here uh, i'm gonna go with obviously daytime and then we hit next and then what we want to do is we want to make sure offline mode is checked and you can, from there, enable PVE, which means you can spawn the scavs in. And if you do that, you can uh, change the difficulty of them. Uh, there's also a couple other things that you can do. You can enable the scav boss on the map. Scav war basically means all the scavs fight each other. Tad and Curse is kind of like COD zombies, where all the scavs will come to you. Um, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, in fact, for your first few raids, I would just pick a map and go into offline mode, okay? Uh, because every single time you spawn in, it's gonna be a different spawn which means you'll have a different extract that you have to get to across the map um, so I would I would do this for about three to four raids just to kind of learn the map learn the layout of it uh, maybe find a good looting path uh, and then once you're done with that maybe for a couple more offline raids I would just enable the PVE so you can kind of understand where the scabs are, are going to be in the map uh, and then once you're done with all that maybe hop into an actual raid the cool thing about the uh, offline mode is that it does not affect your progress so you can go in completely kitted up and die and it's not gonna you're not gonna lose that stuff in the same sense if you gain xp during that raid it's not gonna count all right ladies and gentlemen that is gonna do it for today's episode again i want to apologize in advance but this game is very very thick as far as information and stuff. So I'm gonna try to keep the videos concise, but I do hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, again, we covered a, a basic overview of the game, essentially. Next week's video, we're gonna actually be getting into our first ever raid. I'm gonna be starting on a brand new account so that you guys can see what it looks like whenever Tarkov first fires up and kind of where to go from there, okay? So uh, again, do me a favor. If you did like the video, drop a like, hit the sub button so you're coming back for more with notifications on. Let a com Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the video. Uh, and what you're looking forward to the most in this series. And uh, as always, I'll catch you guys next time, okay?